This is Kenya, a place where dreams of tomorrow are nurtured today. For many, it's known as Hakuna Matata. Hakuna Matata! Hakuna Matata! Hakuna Matata! Hakuna Matata! Let's meet Margaret Kyogora. She's the driving force behind the nation's youth movement. I'm talking about a relentless visionary leader, passionate advocate, and proud champion of the youth. I am a youth champion and I love championing for youth initiatives. As the Chief Executive Officer of National Youth Council, it's quite a humbling opportunity, mm. noting it's an opportunity to represent 75% mm. of the population of Kenya. Miss Margaret is the mastermind leading the change towards a brighter future for all Kenyan youths. Join us in today's episode as we explore how Miss Margaret Kiyogora is influencing and empowering all the youths of Kenya and what other African countries can learn from her leadership. Let me welcome you once again to the Channel 63 Network. My name is Emmanuel Daitumi, and as you know, this channel is about how do we prepare our young people for the future of Africa. The African Union Commission has given the strategy Agenda 2063. We also have the Africa continental free trade area. But as you know, most about 70% of our continent are aged between 15 and 35. And that is why today we are so privileged to be in the city of Nairobi, specifically in the office of Chief Executive Officer of the National Youth Council of the country Kenya. And I'm speaking and talking to no other person than Madam Margaret Kyogora. Margaret, it's yes. an honor to have you. Thank you. Thank and you. thank you so much for hosting us in your beautiful office. You're most welcome. Thank you. Yes. Thank, thank you, you so very much, much for even coming. Wonderful. <laughs> yes. Wonderful. So let's begin, Margaret. I mean, I, I've interacted with you. I remember when we met in December. Mm. That was the first time I met you. And I was so impressed with the way you articulated you know, your remarks. Mm. And uh, tell us a bit about yourself. Who is Margaret Kyogora? And how has the journey been so far? Uh, th thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Emmanuel. First of all, I, I think this journey, we started after the Youth Connect, after you've mentioned. Absolutely. Uh, where you reached out and we've kept on planning until today has happened. So I'm very grateful that today you're here in my office. Right. So that we can be able to just have a conversation. Absolutely. Uh, and I'll start by introducing myself. Sure. Uh, as you've said and rightfully said, my name is Margaret Kyogora. Mm -hmm. uh, I am a youth champion and I love championing for youth initiatives. Uh, apart from that, I'm a professional human resource uh, professional right. where I've been trained and I've been able to practice the same. Apart from that, also I've been trained in international relations and mm. both of these are about diplomacy and people management. And my journey has been quite an interesting one. I've mm. been in the banking sector where wow. it's corporate and uh, <laughs> private sector. I've also been in hospitality industry where a lot of this you'll find young people are the ones that are mostly there. Uh, and finally, I've been in government uh, for the past few years mm. where I've been able to be given a responsibility to lead this institution as the Chief Executive Officer of National Youth Council. It's quite a humbling opportunity, mm. noting it's an opportunity to represent 75% mm. of the population of Kenya. So it's been such a humbling uh, opportunity, just being able to be the person who is spearheading mm. uh, the initiative to change the youth uh, of this country and mm. to ensure that we empower them. Interesting. So, so thank you, thank you very much. This is awesome. I mean, to, to I mean, I, 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 I got almost some some goose pimples when he said you are in charge of the seventy five percent of the population of Kenya. Yes, that's awesome. That's an awesome responsibility. It is an awesome responsibility, mm -hmm. but also it's also a vast and a major responsibility. Mm -hmm. When we talk of 75%, we're talking about any person under the age of 35. Mm -hmm. So that means there are those ones who are 0 mm -hmm. to 35. That's what That's we're talking about. Uh, but when you look at it, our definition for youth in our country is 18 to 35. Okay. And in that number, when you look at it, people who have just finished high school and are now are in colleges and uh, training institutions, mm -hmm. you'll find it's mostly around 35%. Okay. Still a big responsibility. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So tell me a bit about the National Youth Council. What exactly does the National Youth Council do? 
in terms of your strategic objective yes. for Kenya? Yes. Uh, National Youth Council uh, is a semi-autonomous institution. Okay. What this means, it's an agency under the government, mm -hmm. and it's an agency under the Ministry of Youth Affairs, okay. uh, Creative Economy, and Sports. Okay. This is a ministry that is led by our visionary leader, Honorable right. Ababu Namwamba, mm. who is our cabinet secretary. Uh, okay. It's also under our permanent secretary, uh, Mr. Ismail Made, okay. and also under our permanent secretary under the sports, for sports, sorry, uh, engineer Peter Tom. Right. So these are our leaders that have continued to provide leadership, mm. and they've continued to provide that visionary leadership to ensure that this institution is ensuring and empowering the young people. Uh, when you look at uh, our mandate, our right. mandate... Be before you go to your mandate, I, yes. I, tell me, what's, what did you say the ministry is? Ministry of... Our ministry is Ministry of Youth, youth Affairs. Uh, youth Affairs. Creative Economy. Creative Economy? Yes, that is what That is what got me. <laughs> wow. And when you look at that, that's where I like, young I like people are. I like the two are. words, Creative Economy. Yes. Interesting. Yes. Okay. I hope I hope in our conversation you you get us into a little bit of what constitutes the creativity as far as the economy is concerned. I can do it now, or Please, I can. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, when you look at it, um, a, a lot of our young people mm -hmm. are in the creative industry. Right. You find they are the content creators. Mm -hmm. They are in arts. Mm -hmm. They are in uh, music. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why our ministry is majorly uh, has been constituted to be able to. Uh, provide an opportunity and leadership and guidance wow. when it comes to that creative economy. Mm. Most of the time you find we were all looking for white collar jobs. Absolutely. But we have a lot of young people creating content mm. and they can be able to be job creators. Right. So that's the reason why our ministry has been crafted to ensure that apart from youth affairs, mm -hmm. there's the creative economy. How do we monetize talent? How do we ensure young people are making uh, an income out mm. of their God-given skills? That's yes, interesting. yes, that, that, that's, that's the reason why. I, I really would like to go deeper with the minister himself to know how this is being... Because and I'm asking that because in most countries, yes. they have the Ministry of Finance and Economic Planning. Yes. But here, this is the first time I'm hearing Ministry of Youth Affairs and Creative Economy, yes. which is a very, very exciting thing. Yes. Now, but let's, let's zero in on the National Youth Council. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a bit about some of the strategic pillars? Mm -hmm. And here, I, I want us, I want you to address some of the pillars like uh, Sawa Zisha Gumzo. Gumzo. Yes. What, what is that about? <laughs> tell us. Uh, that's one of our programs, because mm -hmm. uh, when you look at our mandate, mm -hmm. our mandate is to ensure youth participation, uh, to ensure youth representation and association right. in political, economic, mm -hmm. and social sphere. Mm -hmm. And how we do this is through programs like Sawazisha Gumzo. Sawazisha Gumzo is a Swahili word. Mm. It's let's start a dialogue. Okay. And we do this through intra and intergenerational dialogue. Because what we realize is that young people want an avenue to be able to just have a conversation. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you find they are going through a lot of challenges. They don't even know what platform to go to. When we talk of Sawazisha Gumzo, we are looking at issues to do with mental health. We are looking at issues to do with early pregnancies. Mm -hmm. When COVID happened, that's the time we realized some of these things were very big and no one was talking about mm. them. You find we have our 18-year-old who is under uh, the definition and our constitution is a youth okay. uh, but you find this person finishes school gets pregnant uh, what next for them so they don't even know where to start mm. so but by having this conversation going and telling them that yes maybe you might have uh, uh, gotten your uh, gotten pregnant but that's not the end of the day mm. that, that's not the end of it you can be able to pick yourself up and start mm -hmm. uh, a life and move on uh, and again when you look at issues to do with drugs, drugs and substance abuse who are they affecting? Young you, people. Sure. They don't even know where to have this conversation. We don't even know how to reintegrate them back because mm. some, sometimes you find everyone shuns them out. And you find that's where the young, young people go to crime because mm. no one is listening to mm. them. So by having this intergenerational dialogue, when we are, where we are talking about teenage pregnancy, we're talking about drugs and substance abuse, we're talking about HIV and AIDS, conversation that no one wants to talk about, mm. then we are giving them a par platform to be able to engage. Mm. Apart from that, there is a program for Faraja. Faraja... Be before you go there, uh, yes. Margaret, uh, I'm interested because I I'm just hoping that this is not theoretical. Mm -hmm. uh, because the issues you've raised are yes. major problems across board, Africa, yeah. the whole continent. Yes. So in terms of practical application, mm -hmm. how do you give me an example of how do you really go about it? 
Okay. Because you're talking of intergenerational, yes. which means that this is something that cuts across all generations. Yes. So tell me, how do you go about it in terms so that you know other countries can also learn from this mm -hmm. sort of practice? What we realize when mm -hmm. we are doing this intergenerational dialogue, if you call young people to come, mm -hmm. you will be shocked they will not come. But if you put an activity for them to come and have that activity, they will always come. Okay. So what we picked was cultural activities where you can be able to showcase what are those people of Maasai uh, do? Mm -hmm. What do they, what are they big on? Mm -hmm. What are people from Kisi's big on? Mm -hmm. And when that happens, you find people come showcasing their culture. Oh. During that time, mm -hmm. then you have the dialogue because oh. you have the numbers. If you call them and tell them we are going to talk about HIV and AIDS, don't come. the one thing young people will tell you, we already know, mm. they will not come, even mm. if they don't have the even information. Even teenage pregnancy. Exactly. They'll, They'll tell, tell you, yeah. we already know about yeah. this, we've seen mm. it, we've mm. read it, we can be mm. able to get the information. Mm. But when you give them an activity that brings them on the table, right. then they are able to come and you have that conversation. Mm. The other way we've been doing it is through sports. Okay. You find young people love sports. Sports. sports, absolutely. Football, basketball. It's an African thing. It. It's an African <laughs> thing. That's the one thing that separates you. I'm sure you've heard of the way people align with your tribes. Mm -hmm. But when you have sports, if either you're Everything supporting, it's a goal. You're absolutely. trying to get a goal. You're trying to get that shot on mm. basketball. Mm. It's no longer about where you come from, mm. but the team you support. Yes. So when you have that conversation, you find we are supporting team A, team B, and then at the same time, we are telling you, do you even know about the government initiatives? Sometimes they don't even know about the government initiatives mm. that are there. Mm. So mm. that's the time we tell them, Wonderful. there are these opportunities. Are you aware of mm. them? Are you, have you been able to tap into mm. them? And we have that conversation mm. with our young I people. Now getting, I'm getting the creative economy aspect of your ministry exactly. work, as you mentioned. This is, mm. this is wonderful. And I need to commend you. Now, we are talking to Madam Margaret Kyogora, the mm. CEO of the National Youth Council of uh, the Republic of Kenya. And we are right here in, his, in her office in Nairobi. Margaret, Yes. Tell me about your far Faraja as well. Uh, Faraja, Dr. Mm. Emmanuel, is... Because uh, that's, that's to do with, you know, civic engagement. Uh, Faraja is different. Right. Faraja is to do with mental health, actually. Mental health. Uh, and how we came about the okay. Faraja... Yeah, yes, uh, you're right. Yes, how we came about Faraja mm. is actually during COVID. Mm. During COVID, we realized there was a lot of mental cases. There was a lot of uh, suicide also cases coming up. And the reason for this is because young people are going through stressful engagement. You find they were going through different stresses. Yeah. Yeah. But at the end of the day, they did not have a valve. They mm. didn't know where to talk about some of these things. These are... Uh, uh, an activity we did in one of the slum areas in uh, Nairobi, mm. uh, in a place called, um, um, in a place in Nairobi, mm. where one of the parents actually was part of uh, our audience. Okay. So she was able to give a testimony that uh, her son mm. committed suicide mm. when she was in the house. As a son? The son. So when we asked what happened, uh, she gave now, she gave the story that the son was being bullied in school. He was not talking to anyone. At the end of the day, this young man hanged himself, himself. at her house, at her balcony. So you can imagine the pain of that mother. Only to realize that this young boy or this young man had been abused. He did not have someone to talk to. Talk to. to. So, and with that, we realized there were a lot of cases, someone uh, wanting to commit suicide because they do not have an avenue. Mm. So we started this Faraja uh, mm -hmm. initiative and a Faraja program where we bring on board uh, trained psychologists and trained counselors. When we go into the field, they normally come there, and young people can just be able to go there and have a conversation with Absolutely. them. Uh, so that even when you are going to the field, apart from the intergenerational dialogue, mm -hmm. are we having a, 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 a safe space where young people can be able to have a conversation? Mm. If you're going through family stresses, sometimes you find uh, the stresses are at home, sometimes you find the stresses are at work, mm. can you find that safe space? Mm. And we've been working with trained counselors, because from our institution, ours, you can only provide that platform for the, the trained counselors so yeah. that they can be able to mm. have this conversation. Mm. And we've seen people, young people, being able to come up and have a conversation and just tell us, this is what I'm going through. I don't have a job. Mm. I don't have uh, money to support my family. There's actually one young person who said, if you, you guys did not come, to this event. I was going to commit suicide on Sunday. Uh, and this was over a weekend. So when you look at it, young people are going through a lot of things. Uh, when you look at uh, the issues to do with unemployment, mm. there are the highly number of uh, yeah. people not being mm. employed. There's expectation. You have hopes when you finish high school mm. or when you finish university. So being able to provide that platform mm. 
is the one that we've realized that, that uh, they are able that's, to that's open up. That's yeah. and, and are you able to trickle it down to the villages and all of that? Or this is centered in the cities? Uh, mostly for us, we do our, 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 our activities all around Kenya. We have okay. 47 counties. Right. I know we would want to go to each and every uh, ward, mm -hmm. but sometimes because of financial Resources. constraints, we are not able to go there. Okay. So what we do, actually, we leverage on technology. Mm -hmm. When we go out there, we also ensure that we are streaming some Absolutely. of these uh, some Absolutely. of this um, uh, engagement. Mm -hmm. We also so, have our YouTube channel okay. where we normally air them. So that in case you did not get an opportunity to, to come to our, our event, you can be able to go mm -hmm. and watch it. Okay. And also we call to young people, be the advocates of what you're doing right. out there. Right. Yes. Interesting. And, uh, you know, not last but not the least, mm. uh, patriotism and volunteerism. Mm. What about that? And then if you can dovetail that with Uzalendo. Yes. I like the Uzalendo. Uzalendo. Yes. Uzalendo is about civic engagement. Civic education, yes. And civic uh, education. Young people have to remember, we are the leaders of today. We mm -hmm. are no longer the leaders of, of the, tomorrow. Of tomorrow. Sure. We have to be the one pushing for the civic engagement. Mm -hmm. When the government calls us to give opinions, mm -hmm. we need to be there and tell, give our opinions. Because sometimes we sit and complain. Mm. We don't want to sit and complain. We want to be able to say, as young people, this is what we've seen with these initiatives. Right. These are the good things we've seen. Mm. But also these are the areas that they, we can have improvement. That way, we even help the conversation about young people. Mm. So that young people are not uh, labeled as uh, complainers, but we, we need to be part of solutions. Mm. We need to be the ones providing solutions in our, uh, in our community. Mm. So for the civic engagement, and also remembering that uh, uh, we need to be also uh, uh, participate in the democratic uh, activity. We need to go out there and vote for our leaders mm. when we are called upon. We can't just sit and say we are not going to participate. So young people need to be able to participate mm. uh, in civic engagement. Mm. And that's what we've been calling upon uh, for them to be able to, to be part of. One of the things we did, especially during the 2020, 2022 election, election, was to actually ensure that we were having conversations. We need to be, we, we can no longer be used as the instigators of violence. Mm. Because when a country is not in peace, we are the first people to suffer yeah. as young people. Especially women. I, and women, children, children and the youth. youth. Mm -hmm. So for us, one of the things we'll be advocating for is for us to be um, peace builders, mm -hmm. to be the ones who are pushing for peaceful right. elections, right. to be the ones who are participating, to be the ones who are vying. Uh, as we said, we are not the leaders of tomorrow, mm. we are the leaders mm. of today. Mm. We need also mm. to vie in these decision-making mm. uh, mm. opportunities. Interesting. Yeah. I need to commend you because, I mean, I, I remember the last election where it became bloody and all of those things. But 2020 was virtually, you know, seamless, which yes. was very good. Yes. Which means you've and been And I working think it's hard. because of that conversation when people realize that it, it, when, when, you, you, when you allow yourself to go to the downhill of violence, mm. it has more impact, a negative right. impact. Right. as opposed to people agreeing to disagree mm. Mm. yes interesting mm. now let, let's let's go back to where it all began mm. from december yes you and i met in december in nairobi here yes at the youth connect mm -hmm. africa summit mm -hmm. which was i think was fantastic mm -hmm. hosted by you guys mm -hmm. i guess it was very tiring for you Working across, I mean, around the <laughs> clock to make sure hosting over how many? Over 4,000? 20,000 20, 20, youth from all yes. over the continent. Yes. How did you feel? Uh, it, it's such a humbling experience. Mm. Uh, you remember this is an initiative that started from Rwanda. Rwanda, yes. And Kenya was privileged enough to be given the opportunity right. and the rights to host it in mm -hmm. 2023. Mm -hmm. uh, being able to host the Youth Connect 2023, mm -hmm. for me, I can say it was such a successful and uh, such a humbling experience right. because we were able to uh, host 20,000. Mm -hmm. You remember the biggest number that has been hosted is 12,000. 12, so we can say it's such a, a success mm -hmm. and a humbling mm -hmm. uh, opportunity to host 20,000. And I'm sure you saw how, how much energy what has uh, KICC. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, yes, I was yes. there. I mm -hmm. saw it. Yes. I saw it. Now, I thought that, you know, it was a very interesting uh, look at the theme. Youth innovating a borderless Africa with very interesting sub-themes. Borderless Africa, did you achieve your objective from the summit? Oh, yes. I believe we achieved our objective. How? When you look at it, mm -hmm. uh, number one, the conversation we had the conversation with the young people. Mm -hmm. And they were able to tell us, this is what we are looking for. Mm -hmm. When you look at it, at the end of the day, we are looking at African youth being able to trade with each other. 
I know you mentioned about the African continental trade at some point. Yes. And I believe we'll get deeper into that sure. conversation. Sure. For us to be able to do that, we must ensure we open up our borders. Absolutely. You remember at the end of the summit, mm -hmm. His Excellency, mm -hmm. Dr. William Samoe, mm -hmm. actually spoke about opening the borders of Kenya. It shall no longer be necessary for any person from any corner of the globe to carry the burden of applying for a visa to come to Kenya. 27 countries in Europe today with 430 million people removed visas. We still have visas. Having visa restrictions amongst ourselves is working against us. And for me, if that's not a success, mm -hmm. I don't know what success we are looking mm -hmm. for. Because he committed Kenya to be a borderless uh, country, mm -hmm. where we can be able to open our country for other young people to come and see. Right. What are we doing? Mm. How are we doing it? How can we improve? Mm. How can we learn from one mm. another? Otherwise, if we continue having the borders, We'll continue having the colonial the issues. mindset. The colo <laughs> Actually, we'll continue having the colonial mindset. Yes. We see countries that are very developed and they are able to trade with each other. Mm. But the same countries, because we were colonized by them, mm. we find our mind is still shut Absolutely. by those borders. Absolutely. So for me, I believe it was successful because, number one, our president mm. was able to declare. Kenya is a free mm. visa free mm. country. Mm. Yes. I like I like I like the idea of visa free country. I need to commend the president. Yes. That was a very bold initiative. Yes. But Margaret, I'm not sure whether you are aware, but there's a lot of downside on that policy. Yes. Um, a lot of people thought it was free, but it's not free. Now, foreigners visiting Kenya will still need to apply for visas to enter the country, despite President William Ruto's declaration last year that by the beginning of 2024, Kenya will be a visa-free country. For example, now, I'm a Ghanaian. Yes. Now, I used to come to Kenya without having to go through any problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, now you get to the... I didn't know, for example, on this trip, mm -hmm. that I'm supposed to do e e D E T A. Mm -hmm. I think maybe something some travel authorization and yes. then you have to pay $35 yes. online. Mm -hmm. That's not free. Mm -hmm. So when you say free board, free visa, mm -hmm. and now people are being paid, like, when people don't even know that they have to pay, mm -hmm. is that free visa? Uh, and how do you take that? When we say free, also mm -hmm. uh, this cost of... Because you see, before, when you come here, mm -hmm. you don't pay anything. You just mm -hmm. stamp your passport and you go. Mm -hmm. But now... That people come and if they don't, and you can't pay with mobile money, you can't pay, with, you have to have a visa or MasterCard or Impesa. Mm -hmm. So imagine you don't have a visa card, mm -hmm. you don't have a MasterCard, you are 10 back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a guy who used to come here, do trading, and then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. he doesn't know that he has to go through these things. He yeah. comes here, he doesn't have Impesa, he doesn't have a visa card, mm -hmm. he's put back on the plane and mm -hmm. then he goes back. Is that free visa? Uh, I believe um, in every new uh, strategy, yeah. sometimes there are always some teething problems. Teething problems. That's what I tell And I believe guys. that's what we are experiencing yeah. Yeah. right now. Uh, when we get such feedback, and I believe from different countries, people mm -hmm. can be able to give feedback of, this is what we were hoping to have Ab gotten, uh, but these are the challenges yes. we are facing. Yes. And then with that, we can be able to improve the processes. Absolutely. So when I look at it, uh, is that right now we could be going through the TV problems. problems that we will be able to Absolutely. fix when we get such feedback sure. from. And I'm sure mm -hmm. being the CEO of the National Youth Council and knowing that your young people do trading and with other continental, other people from different countries, because Kenya is more like a hub. Yes. For many, many people. I mean, mm -hmm. your airline is doing fantastically well. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure this feedback at your next, you know, policy, you know, engagement, yeah. you probably would, you know, bring it to, to, the, to the table mm -hmm. that, hey, guys, this uh, young people need to trade with their colleagues in mm -hmm. other countries, but mm -hmm. this is going to, you know, militate against them. So mm -hmm. I'm sure we want, once we pick that up. I, actually, that because that, that's the reason why one of our mandates is to push for youth-friendly policies. Absolutely. So that's something that we can Absolutely. be able to pick and say, yes, yeah. we were able to achieve this, but we can be able to go further yeah. if you are able to support super, the young people super. of Africa. And I need to commend your president, to be honest mm -hmm. with you. And I think, I think a lot of countries have taken a clue from that. Ghana, mm -hmm. I know, is also working towards yeah. the free visa thing. Mm -hmm. You know, Rwanda is already doing it. Yes. So that's good. Now, let's, let's, dream, let's, let's look at some of the key thematic areas. Mm -hmm. The renaissance of the African dream. What is the African dream for you? Uh, for me, African dream is an Africa that uh, is having its own solutions. Mm -hmm. 
solutions that are led by African people. Mm -hmm. An African that um, is not reliant or dependent mm -hmm. on um, the Western culture. An Africa that is proud of its, its heritage. Mm -hmm. And when I look at our forefathers, that's what they had in mind. Absolutely. That we would move forward together. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why most of them fought for independence. Mm -hmm. It has gotten to a point where maybe we are stagnant and we need to be reminded Absolutely. that this is what the people who fought so deeply mm. and a lot of blood was shed, this is what they wanted. Mm. An Africa that can be so proud of its culture mm. and an Africa that moves forward mm. together mm. without leaving anyone behind. Absolutely. I know we've had challenges, but I believe with the many initiatives and many policies that have come up, you see there's intentions mm or being able to correct what we've not sure. been able to achieve. Sure. So for me, uh, the renaissance of Africa mm. is Africa being able to provide its own solutions. So how are, you, how are you integrating this in your core activities, this African dream thing? Uh, people in primary schools, secondary mm -hmm. schools, mm -hmm. as youth counsel, mm -hmm. which programs are you undertaking to ensure that this mindset, this paradigm shift mm -hmm. is integrated, you know, is, is ingrained in our, the minds of our young people of Kenya. Because mm -hmm. I think it's a very fantastic idea. Yes. You know, so how, how are you going about this? Uh, when I look at it, you see, even the government is guided by a strategy. Sure. And there's those strategies that we find as the government of the day, mm -hmm. they're able to push for. Right. Right now, we are pushing for digitization. Right. And that's what we are pushing for being able to have our country. I'm sure you've heard of the digital superhighway yeah, yeah, being yeah, talked yeah, about. Yeah. And fact, when we came, wanted to order Uber, <laughs> yes. and without visa, you can't do all these things. I said, wow, <laughs> this is high, high class. <laughs> <laughs> so you can imagine mm. what we are pushing for from the grassroots, mm. being able to have um, our people literate and digitally literate Good. so that we are not confined in the old ways of mm. doing things, mm. but being able to interact and learn from one another. Mm. One of the things that right now the government is pushing for is actually for digital jobs. What? That means I can be able to work from, in, home. from home anywhere, and in Kenya and anywhere. I can even work in Ghana, sure. but I'm in Kenya. Yeah. Yeah. So what does yeah. that mean? Yeah. It yeah. means that we are empowering our young people mm to be uh, ready for the 21st century. Uh, we can no longer continue saying that I can only work in this space, sure. but I can be able to learn and I can be able to contribute mm. best practices of mm. my country mm. to another country. Interesting, but there's something I want, I want to find out from you. Mm. I mean, you realize that digitization is key, yes. but cost of internet in Africa yes. is extremely expensive. Oh, yes. So what is the NYC doing to conscientize our government, especially mm -hmm. government of, uh, since that is a major strategy mm -hmm. of, of, of government, mm -hmm. and bulk, the bulk of the mm -hmm. population are falls under your domain. Mm -hmm. What I, how are you, you know, let me use the word, how are you lobbying government yes. to ensure that, because I know if you don't lobby them, <laughs> you know, they won't do it. <laughs> how are you lobbying government to ensure that the cost of, you know, internet especially, mm -hmm. It's brought up. Now most Africans have tel I mean, smartphones, mm. but without data, yeah. you can't do these sort of things that we are talking about. So how are you lobbying government? One of the things uh, I'll be able to inform you, Dr. Emmanuel, mm. uh, Kenya has really moved Absolutely. forward yeah. in the right direction. Sure. That's one that we know. Uh, when you look at digital space right now, mm -hmm. we are way, way ahead. And yeah. this has been because of the deliberate efforts the government has been able to put in place. Right. When I look at digital space, right now, we moved, you can find even data mm. for as low as 10 shillings. Mm. And for me, that's a move in the right direction. Mm. Reason for this is because uh, we are looking at young people. Uh, you remember during COVID, mm -hmm. um, students were going to school online. The yeah, issue yeah, yeah. about going to class was no longer mm. there. So from then you find government has put in a lot of money mm. when it comes to the infrastructure. And because the lack of infrastructure is the, the reason why you find the cost of internet going very high. Sure. But for our country, you find that we've been able to put in a lot of infrastructure, mm. hence reducing the cost of our data. That's but good. apart from that, mm. we've been lobbying. And that's the reason why you find things that like digital superhighway coming in. Mm -hmm. One of the things our ministry is doing is having youth hubs. Mm. And these youth hubs is, is where young people are able to access internet freely. 
Wow. Being able to go to th those youth hubs and you actually conduct your job there. And these youth hubs are in the counties. They are in the wards. And they it's free. In, it is free. All you need is your laptop. Go there. You just even need on a your laptop. smartphone. In fact, they are they have computers. So you, there are desktops there. Even if there are few desktops, you can be able to go, do whatever that you needed to do, and move on. It's like a cyber cafe. Wow. But it's a government cyber cafe, quotes and quotes. So looking at that, we've been able to continue lobbying for, first of all, can we have now this internet being um, connected there? Because you find mm. there are those ones that do not have mm. internet. Mm. So, But we continue to, to push for, can we have all of these hubs being properly um, uh, connected mm. to ensure that the young people can be able to utilize. Oh, that's them. good. Yeah, which which means that the, the aspect of you know e-commerce and all of that is becoming a big issue in Kenya now. Oh, really? It's a really Wonderful. big issue in Kenya. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very so much. that takes us to the Africa Protocol on Women and Youth SMEs, mm -hmm. and you know, women and youth-led SMEs. Yes. How excited are you about this protocol? Um, when you look at. Um, this protocol, you remember this something that came in after yeah. the, the signing sure. of uh, Africa Continental Trade, Trade yeah. uh, Agreement. Yeah. And when you look at it, first of all, me, I'm excited because when I look at it, 47 countries have already signed up. Absolutely. That. So for me, that already shows mm. the commitment that Africa has. Mm. And when it goes further to have a pot protocol for women and youth, mm. it shows me how serious we are in changing the trajectory and that of gives young you more job it gives us more, more job. responsibility exactly <laughs> because when you look at it mm. these are the people who have been uh, marginalized when you look at it mm. these are the people who have not been accessing uh, some of these opportunities sure. but when you have a protocol that is geared towards the 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 women the youth then it means these are opportunities that we can be able to grab when you talk of smes as in who are the majority there it's women sure. and youth. Mm -hmm. And guess what? It means they can be able to change the conversation about unemployment. Mm -hmm. We can be able to employ ourselves. Mm -hmm. We can be able to employ other people. We can be able to contribute to the economy of each and every country of Africa. Mm -hmm. So apart from being uh, carried by other people, mm. women and youth mm. are now bigger part of carrying the economy Absolutely. and the economies of Africa. Right. So I'm quite excited. I, 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 I hear you and as I, as I listen to you, I'm excited as well. Yes. But the question I'm asking is within the whole, you know, specifics that we are talking about, mm. how is the NYC mm -hmm. supporting women and young people in Kenya mm -hmm. to take advantage of this protocol? Yes. Because it's for the women and the young people of yes, this continent. Yes, that's very true. And, and mm. Kenya is way ahead. So mm. if Kenya does well and they're able to, you know, get a lot of things going, other countries can copy from you yes, guys. Yes. So how are you supporting the women and youth of Kenya to take advantage of this protocol? Number one, uh -huh. uh, when you look at me today, right. I'm dressed in an Africa... I can tell. <laughs> ...dress. And this African dress has been made by an SME. <laughs> A young lady wow. from the Maasai community. Mm. Someone who has done this with their hands. So that means from the beadwork to the material to the design has been done by a lady in Maasai community. Someone who might have not gotten an opportunity mm. if we do not have the funds that we have right now. You find like in our country, mm. we have a fund like Women uh, Enterprise Fund that is supporting the women mm. in business. Mm. In our country still, we have the Youth Enterprise Development Fund. Mm. That fund is supporting youth in business, and especially in SMEs. Apart is it real youth in business or politically aligned no, youth in business? No, it's youth in business. So it doesn't matter which political party you belong to? It does not matter what political party you belong to. I'm asking so that long because as you are a young countries. person... Uh, I'm asking that because in some countries, uh -huh. if you don't have a political color, uh -huh. you're not going to assess that fund. Now for our country, it's mm -hmm. different. Absolutely. Because so long as you have an ID mm -hmm. that shows that you're between 18 and 35, mm -hmm. that means you have to be 34 and 11 months. Wow. Then that means you can be able to access this I need to reduce funding. my age and become a Kenyan. But for, for, <laughs> women, <laughs> for women, it is open to women. Okay. But the one for youth, it is capped at youth between the age of 18 and to 35. 35. The reason for this, we want to empower, because when, uh, a lot, when, when, when young people were, were giving their views on what would they want to see changing, mm -hmm. especially when we were coming up with our constitution 2010, they were talking about we cannot be able to access credit. 
because you need collateral. I'm a young person, I don't have collateral. Uh, but now you find there are these funds. What they're saying is you can be able to come together as a group mm. of young people. Right. Uh, if you do not have, uh, if, if you're not one person with a business idea, we can be able to fund a group, and we have different, um, uh, different. Um, uh, what are they called? Brackets mm. or different loan brackets that we can be able to give you mm. from amount X to amount Y. Mm. This is the the, the things that the you need to can... yeah the, the amounts that you can be able to access. Right. Uh, so when you look at it, uh, it, it, you do not have to be aligned to I any see. political party. So long as you are a youth, mm. you can be able to access this. Okay. So long as you are a woman, you can be able to access the Women Enterprise Fund. Mm. And apart from that, mm -hmm. our flagship program. Hustler Fund. I'm sure you've heard of, you've heard of Hustler mm. Fund. Mm. The Hustler Fund now, you only need your phone. You only need your phone to access funding. And this one is for the lady who is at the bottom of the barrel, mm. the bottom of the economy. Right. When you look at um, someone who is selling vegetables, they only need maybe 1,500 to be able to stock up. Initially, you find you couldn't get such a loan because when you go to a bank, they you can't. You. They don't even have that. Uh, that they, uh, they call them the informal traders. Exactly, mm. they don't have that facility. Mm. But right now, when uh, the the uh, the the Kenya Kwanzaa administration came to office, they realized this is one of the biggest challenges that we are having. So what have they done? The first product they started was Hustler Fund, mm -hmm. where just using your phone, you don't need to regardless go to the bank. of a smart or a USSD phone, you can be able to access the loan. You don't need to go to the bank. You are the comfort of, of even right home. now, if I wanted to borrow, I just need to follow star 254 hash mm. and I access the loan. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. Yes. That's, 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 so, so in other words, the point you're making is that you are not just leaving it at the policy level. Yes. You are going down to ensure that the young people, mm. the youth of Kenya mm -hmm. are actually empowered yes. financially. What about skills development as well? Because you see, mm. uh, if you look at the, 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 the business management in Africa now, out of every four businesses, it said after two, maybe sometime six months, one year, three of them collapse yeah. because people don't have the management skills. What are you doing about that? Because if you give them the money, mm -hmm. They don't have the skills to manage these SMEs. Mm -hmm. It's going to collapse. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing about that? So you find, um, like for for us, mm -hmm. what we do mostly is sensitization. Yeah. Sensitizing and also being able to bring these institutions that have capacity, mm -hmm. uh, especially the technical capacity, to right. be able to support young people. Right. Uh, one of the things that we do as National Youth Council mm -hmm. is we normally have a challenge. We call it FURSA. FURSA is a Kiswahili word for opportunity. Okay. So what we do in FURSA, uh, we give opportunities to our young people. In last year's International Youth Day, which is normally done in August, uh, in the month of August, mm -hmm. uh, during the International Youth Day, we were able to do a, a challenge mm -hmm. where we called young people and told them, are you talented? Mm -hmm. Can you be able to sing? Mm -hmm. Are you looking for an opportunity? So we gave them an opportunity mm -hmm. where people showcase their skills. Mm -hmm. And we were able to mm -hmm. have um, uh, five, uh, five young people being able to be taken to a recording studio mm -hmm. to record a song, which is a youth song, because we are looking at, can we have a song that mm -hmm. the youth of Kenya can, can be able to identify sure. with? Sure. So being able to have that, mm -hmm. uh, those challenges, and apart from that, bringing in the technical expertise. As I said, National Youth Council, we can only provide platforms. Mm. And by providing platforms, because we are a government agency, we are able to call the technical expertise that can be able to come in. Mm. For that activity, we are able to work with one of the government institutions who are a permanent presidential uh, uh, music commission, mm. who are actually, uh, their work is music. Right. And they are able to push for music, and especially during the national holidays and all that. Apart from that, we work with partners like UNDP who are very big on supporting some institution mm -hmm. and supporting young people. So you find, for us, we've realized it's a col collaborative effort, and we can be able to provide a platform, bring in partners and support young people. I know you've asked about how can we be able to ensure that people who have ideas are handheld. Yes. And that's how we do it. Okay. Providing the platform. If someone is in tech, we have institutions that are very big on tech. Some of them that we work with them is like Huawei. Mm. We work, they come in and provide that uh, uh, that technical expertise mm. 
and they work with these young people to ensure that their ideas are not just ideas. And apart from that, one of the things that we've heard young people uh, saying is a challenge is how do we copyright our ideas? Mm. And we've been able to bring in some other institutions from government. Right. We have institutions that are already uh, set out of their mandate is to do copyright protection. Mm. So That's by good. even bringing that information, you will be so shocked, Dr. Emmanuel, some young people don't even know some of this institution yeah. exists. Yeah. So yeah. for us, is bringing the information and empowering them with, there's this institution, right. please reach out. Sensitization. Or bringing the, sensitization, bringing right. that institution to them and saying, we have here, please talk to them. Mm. Tell them how they can be able to access mm. your services mm. that way. We've been able to empower a lot of young people. I like the collaboration that you are pursuing. Yes. But you see, Margaret, if you look at all the programs that you are doing, mm. one would have you know, thought that that should address the issue of unemployment. But you realize that unemployment keeps rising, not only in Kenya, but across the continent. Mm. As a youth activist, mm -hmm. and for that matter, CEO of the National Youth Council of Kenya, mm. are you concerned about this? Of course I am. And what are you doing about uh, it? Being a young person mm -hmm. and being a youth of this country, mm -hmm. it's concerning when you see young people graduate sure. and uh, they are not able to get jobs. Sure. However, I am hopeful because, as you said, we've seen a lot of initiatives being put into this. Mm -hmm. We've moved from um, the white-collar jobs mm -hmm. and we are trying to encourage young people to mm -hmm. go to what skills do you have? Right. And apart from skills, the other things we are looking at, what is, how can we be able to change the mindset of our young people? Paradigm shift. Because the one thing that we've realized is that all youth, even if you tell them you can be a very good um, a hairdresser, mm. they will still insist, I want to have a white collar job. Mm. But when you look at it right now, skilled jobs are paying very well. Mm -hmm. They are very rare. I keep saying, when you look at the AI job, the, the AI in invention, yeah. they are taking up all other jobs. But when you look at the skill, the jobs that are skill-based, the and AI creative, is not there. The creative arts. And the creative arts, you cannot replace them sure. because this is a God-given talent. When you look at one of the flagship programs mm. that we have in our ministry, mm. is Talanta Hela. What is that? Talanta Hela, uh, Dr. Emmanuel, these are Swahili words. Mm. You know we love Swahili. Yes, I know. And Swahili is our language. Yes, so tala, Talanta Hewa. What is not that? Not Talanta Hewa. It is Talanta Hela. Not oh, Talanta Hela. Talanta Hela. Talanta Hela. Hela. Okay, talanta tell me. Talanta is talent. Oh, right. Hela is money. Mm. So we are trying to ensure, not we are trying. Yes. We are working towards mm. monetizing mm. the talents of our young people. Interesting. How do you do that? How do we do that? Mm -hmm. Number one, mm -hmm. ensuring that we have a structured, a structured industry mm -hmm. of talent, um, the, the people in the talent industry. Mm -hmm. One of the things you'll realize is that our young people have a lot of talent, sure. but they don't even know how to package the talents. Mm -hmm. They don't even know how to, prov to present a business case on their right. talent. Right. You will find someone is in acting, but they don't even know how to enter into a contract that can be able to benefit them. To bring out the business of business of talent. Exactly. That's you find because we lack jobs, we will run and sign a contract mm. only to find we have tied ourselves for years yes. to come. Sure. So for us as a ministry, we mm. are looking at number one, how can we be able to have informed uh, creative industry? By the time I'm sitting down and signing a contract, Am I signing a contract to benefit me for generation to come? I'll use an example of Nike. Mm. We know Air Jordans, most of us. Sure. We've seen a Nike shoes, mm. most of us. Mm. When you hear the story of how mm. Michael Jordan's mom mm. was able to guide the conversation that up until today, Michael Jordan is retired, but he continues to earn royalties. Absolutely. Because of Air Jordan. Absolutely. Young and youth continue asking for Air Jordan mm. right now mm. because of the story and the legendary story mm. behind mm. this man. Mm. So when you hear that, we want to be able to help our creative industry to be able to, first of all, understand and learn how to enter mm. into contracts that benefits them, 
not just now, but for generations to come. Christian. Look at countries like the developed countries, mm -hmm. where you find a dancer, mm -hmm. a ballet dancer, is a dignified job. Sure. So for me, we are looking at how do we dignify Fine. a dancer mm. so that it's just like any other job. It's just like a lawyer job. How do we dignify it? So that when I come and tell you as a parent, mom, I want to do dancing, mm. it is not frowned upon. Because mm. right now, I'll tell you, the minute you come and tell your mother or your father, <laughs> you want to go and become a dancer, yeah. it is not embraced. Yeah. So we need to have a paradigm shift on our mind Interesting. from our community to our society mm. to the youth themselves mm. so that number one we are appreciating and dignifying these jobs so that now we'll stop talking about unemployment we'll mm. be talking about how many jobs we have we don't even have people to do them yeah. we are seeing countries where they are saying please come to our country mm. Mm. Reason being, they do not have workforce. Yeah. Africa will get there. Interesting. Will get there if we dignify all jobs. Mm. Yes. No, I mean, uh, it's, it's exciting. And the more you talk, the more I appreciate the creative economy of your ministry's yeah. uh, dimension, which is very, very important. Now, you mentioned that right now, a lot of developed countries are asking Africans to come to their countries to come and do jobs and all of that, mm -hmm. which is the case. Mm -hmm. And actually by 2040, statistics show that Africans, out of every five people you see on the street, one will be an African, mm -hmm. which means Africa would constitute a quarter of the world's population. Mm -hmm. Now, the question I'm putting to you is, how is the NYC preparing young people, right, yeah. to take over not only the governance, but the enterprise, businesses, all the damage, the pillars of society. Mm -hmm. How are you preparing them? I like the paradigm shift you are pursuing, mm -hmm. which is key. Mm -hmm. What other things are you doing mm -hmm. to ensure that by 2040, every young Kenyan mm -hmm. is hopeful about the future mm -hmm. and is prepared to take advantage of any opportunity, but most importantly, that young Kenyan knows that he's as good as a Chinese mm -hmm. or an American or British or whatever, which is means that which means that only the best is good for Africa mm -hmm. and for that matter for, for Kenya. What are you doing about that? Uh, number one, what we're doing as National Youth Council, mm -hmm. you remember I told you for us is advocacy. Right. For us is pushing for legislation sure. to ensure that we have laws that are mm -hmm. youth friendly. Mm -hmm. Even for young, that young person, even as they try or even as they pursue jobs out there, right. we want to be able to have a youth that is protected from mm -hmm. manipulation and also a youth that is protected from abuse. Right. So number one is pushing for laws, right. laws that are protecting our mm -hmm. young people. And apart from laws that are protecting our young people, laws are, that are also exposing our young people to opportunities. Because if we are able to take young people in dignified jobs, then I believe as National Youth Council, we will have done our bit. Because we do not have to, all of us work in, uh, in, in, uh, in, in white collar jobs, sure. as I've said. Sure. The other thing that we are doing is, as you've talked about it, ensuring that uh, uh, digitization is mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. We are advocating for digitization and ensuring the person in the most remote area Absolutely. are able to be connected. Mm -hmm. Ensuring that you can be able to work remotely mm -hmm. from whichever part of this, wo this world. Uh, and looking at it, one of the statistics you'll see is that, as you've said, uh, number one, when you go to a lot of developed countries, you'll find a trick, at least an African there. Yeah. But what we are saying also, we want to be proud of what we are doing as Africans. We want to be proud of what we can be able to achieve in Kenya. We've seen a lot of innovations that have been done. One of the innovations, I'm sure you've actually mentioned mm. it, is M-Pesa. Right. M-Pesa is a, a child that was born in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And this child has been... Uh, discussed as a case study in developed countries. Mm. So for me, one thing is reminding our young people, it can be done. you are brilliant minds. Yes. Number one, you are not less than any other person. Mm. You're a brilliant mind, and we are creating this environment for you to thrive. Mm. And we've seen the government initiatives, right. being able to push for young people to be at the table and at the forefront. Right. One of the things we are also doing as National Youth Council is pushing for youth to be in decision-making bodies. Mm. Uh, and these are decision-making bodies in government institutions and also in private sector. Right. Because you find we are never at the table. Right. Uh, we are discussed by others when mm. we are not there. Mm. But we've been able to push that for some institution, which they've already implemented, you find there's a certain percentage 
where young people are required to be there. Mm. Have we achieved fully? No. Not yet. Not yet. It's still work in progress. That's, that's, that's and one of the things that we are pushing for is, is uh, youth inclusivity. Mm. We are pushing for youth inclusion bill. Yes. This youth inclusion bill mm. we are pushing for, I know it's in a draft stage, mm -hmm. it's work in progress, mm -hmm. and we are hoping that... But at least you've taken a major step towards that. Yes. Which is good. So what we are pushing for is that uh, by the time it gets to our legislatures, mm -hmm. We want our young people to be included in each and every board. We have a certain percentage, a, a young person, and women are expected to sit in that board. Reason for this, we are the people who know where the, shoes, the shoe is pinching. Absolutely. And if you are not in that table, someone will come up with uh, policies that will not be speaking to mm. the need, needs of the youth. Mm. So yes, we've seen a lot of improvement and we appreciate what uh, our government has been able to do, mm. but we believe more can be done to be able to ensure that there is inclusion. So, so you see, women. but again, Margaret, if you take a young person to a boardroom mm -hmm. to, I hope it's not just going to sit there and be an observer. So my question is, it's not enough to get a policy that gets youth in the boardroom. Is the policy or is the NYC taking practical steps to empower them to make sure that they understand the boardroom game, mm -hmm. the politics that goes on in the boardroom and all of that? But mm -hmm. again, how do you link that to your educational system? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if you are getting products who cannot read and write, mm -hmm. who can't write summaries of reports and what have you, mm -hmm. that policy is going to fall flat. Mm -hmm. So what, how are you linking that to the Ministry of Education, for example? Oh, one thing uh, I, I will... Um tell you, Dr. Emmanuel, mm -hmm. since 2003, right. uh, we've had a lot of shift in our education. That's when we started our free primary education. Tell us some more. When free primary education started, mm -hmm. it ensured every child went to school to learn reading, writing, speaking, being able to have that basic primary, primary school education. Absolutely. And that was the, 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 that was the first step for Kenya to the right direction. Because when you have an educated uh, workforce, it means they are able to question, mm. they are able also to contribute, mm. and they are able to contribute positively right. to the economy of right. your country. With that, we've seen the same moving to free primary education. Right now, we've seen the government being able to continue pushing for uh, accessibility of funding you through um, higher education loans board. Mm. Reason for this, is so that when youth or young people, men and women, go to university, they are able to settle in. So that means we've cured people not going to school because of school fees, sure. primary school. Sure. We've cured people not being able to go to high school. Mm. And now we've gone to uh, tertiary education. Right now we do not have free tertiary education, but we've been able to provide um, uh, funds, Funded. like um, uh, higher education loans, loans. board, yeah. where they can be able to access, to settle in, in their education system. Mm. Apart from that, we, are, we move to the competence-based curriculum mm. as a country. And this is something that we are looking at, and we've seen a lot of African countries are actually adapting it. Mm. Reason being, we've realized we have a lot of theoretical, uh, students coming out of uh, our education system, mm. but we want to be have an all-rounded uh, student. Mm. We, I've mentioned about um, creative economy. Mm. We are not all talented the same way. Absolutely, there are people who are book smart. Sure. There are those people who are very creative. Sure. There are those young people who are very innovative. Mm. So we want to be able to capture all these people because they they actually uh, they actually contribute to the economy mm. of a country. Mm. So being able to have such kind of an education system, mm. it means we are having an all-rounded society where we will deal, we might not have gotten there, yeah. but we will get there. Yeah. And I've seen initiatives being put there. I've seen commitment where we are looking at how can we be able to deal mm. with this unemployment. Sure. Uh, you talked about skills. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of training, uh, vocational training centers mm. Right now, when you go to developed country, you can't afford a plumber. Yeah. A plumber is very expensive. Uh, th those jobs that people are thinking that, you know... They were for the uneducated. Uh, exactly. But when you look at it, one of the things that uh, our country has been able to embrace, and I believe a lot of countries can be able to mm -hmm. adapt this, uh, when you met these experienced... Plumbers. Plumbers, artisans, artisans sure. and all that, mm -hmm. they have experience. They've worked for over 20, 30 mm -hmm. years. But when you look at our system, yeah. we all ask for 
Where is the certificate? Where's your <laughs> Which school did you go Absolutely. to? Absolutely. So Absolutely. what we've been able to do mm. is being able to give these people certificates. Mm. Interesting. And wow. th that is what I was saying. That Dignify is yes, dignifying mm. their work. That's because cool. you'll find people saying, I want certificates. Mm. So how can you be able, even as you go to the grassroots, wow. how can you be able to give these people a certificate so that mm. they can proudly say, I have a certificate, I have 10 years of experience. Mm. And when you look at some of these areas, when people work as an apprenticeship, they learn a lot from these people because they've been in the industry for years, as opposed to maybe when I go to a theoretical class, I've learned maybe this is the piping system, but I'm not able mm. to actually uh, do experiential way of doing this. Mm. So for us, we are looking at that, uh, pushing for even these people who've been there for years, mm. being acknowledged as, uh, as uh, trailblazers, being acknowledged mm. as master classes mm. and masters in this industry. So, yes, we we'll No, no, I happening. need to commend you. And by the way, we are talking to Margaret Kugora, the mm. Chief Executive Officer of the uh, Kenyan National Youth Council. And if you followed us up to this point, you realize that indeed there's creativity going on mm. in Nairobi and in Kenya. Mm. And I'm going to ask you, Margaret, yes. if I'm to ask you to share three or two or three or four key pillars mm. that since your tenure here as a CEO, mm. you've, you've, you've seen done or in the process of being done that other countries can pick up. What would be these, these four pillars, you know, specifically? I, I think the, one of the things I've seen is um, we've been able to push for youth legislations. And that's one of the things that we can be able to, or I would encourage other countries to, to borrow. Mm -hmm. And one of the policies that we've been able to push for is Kenya Youth Development Policy. Mm. This is a policy that guides when it comes to youth, uh, youth matters. When we're coming up with programs for the youth, the Kenya Youth uh, Development Policy guides us. Mm. And this Kenya Youth Development Policy, it's not an, a document in isolation. Right. Of course, it has been guided by the Constitution of Kenya. Sure. It's been guided by the, the AU Youth Charter. Mm. It's been guided by um, the SDGs. Mm. So you find there are these uh, documents that have been able to guide it, even as we come, uh, we come up with it. Mm. One of the things we've been able to do as National Youth Council of Kenya is we've been able to work through partners mm. to be able to come up with policies at county level. I know how our system is. We have the national government and then we have the county government. Mm. So what we've been able to do, and especially in Asile counties, these mm. are the, the northern side of Kenya, sure. what we've been able to do is come up with policies now uh, doc, uh, ensuring that we customize them mm. to the needs of some of these counties. Wonderful. Reasons for this, we realize youth go through different uh, challenges. Uh, a youth in Nairobi might be talking about maybe the cost of data, mm. but a youth in uh, a place like maybe Mandera, Mandera is looking for- Or Maasai. Or even a Maasai, yeah. they have a different uh, challenge they are sure. going through. So you cannot have a blanket solution Absolutely. to all of them. So we've been able to work through our development partners uh, to ensure that we come up with, um, uh, with the customized uh, policies that speaks to the need of these young people. And these documents, uh, mind you, we've not been the ones uh, just developing them. These are policies developed by the youth themselves. Wow. Because we realize we do not want to be the ones telling them this is your problem. We want these young people to tell us, as a youth in Mandera, as mm. a youth in Garissa, mm. as a youth in Isiolo, mm. these are the challenges Absolutely. that we are going through. And this is, these are solutions we are looking at being able to have. So that is one of the things that I would wish our okay. other National Youth Council, our other youth-led uh, organizations are okay. able to, to actually push for. Sure. The other thing that we've been able to push for is working with youth-serving organizations, mm -hmm. working with faith-based organizations, because one of our mandate is coordination, right. regularization and coordination mm -hmm. of youth-serving organizations. We realize we cannot work in isolation. And you find these are institutions that are already working with the youth. Sure. These are the institutions that are already at the uh, grassroots and mm. working with the youth. Mm. So for us, being able to have collaborative efforts with some of these institutions has been a plus to us so that we can be able to push together. That's because that is, uh, as it's always said, as in, if you want to walk um, alone, if you want to walk alone, you can go very far. Yeah. But if you want to go with... Uh, <laughs> you, go, you, go, you go up to a distance, but yes. if you want to go far, 
You yes, go together. You go together. With others Actually, people. let me take that again. If you want to go uh, fast, yes. then yes, that fast. means you're going to go alone. alone. Yeah. But when you want to go very far, far. please walk with other people. Because you're able to hold each other's hand. You're able to learn from one another. Sure. You're able to encourage one another mm -hmm. to get to the end goal. So apart from even working with youth serving organization, the other thing I would uh, uh, call other African countries, mm -hmm. I know one of the things that we've been able to push for is having access to government procurement uh, opportunities. Mm -hmm. This is one of our, 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 our performance contracting de deliverable that us as government have. Uh, one of the things that we are called upon, 30% of youth, uh, so 30% of government um, contracts. contracts have to go to youth, women, with, uh, women and people with disability. Wow. And this has continued to be, um, to be implemented through the government performance contracting, where we are supposed to report each quarter, how many have you been able, how many youth have you been able to, to, to engage when it comes to supplies? Apart from that, every Friday, we have Buy Kenya, Build Kenya. So every Friday, we are expected to dress in something that I've bought from a Kenyan youth, Kenyan, SME, Kenyan, people living with disability. And apart from that, we buy are... Kenya, buy Kenya, build Kenya. Build Kenya. Because if we want to build our country, we must support the SMEs that are here. We must buy from Kenya. We must be able to support the businesses that are in Kenya. So buy Kenya, build, build Kenya. Kenya. So we are calling, calling for buy, uh, if it's Ghana, yes, buy, Ghana, buy Ghana, build Ghana. Because we can only build our country if we consume what our countries are manufacturing. In other words, buy Africa, build Africa. Yes. So if we're whatever, African in any country, whatever is produced in your country, patronize, showcases, Showcase, showcase it, mm. and then build that particular country. Mm. Now, we're, we're coming to the end of, of, of our conversation, Margaret. Yes. Now, you just mentioned that you work with faith-based institutions, yes. which is commendable. Yeah. We're living in a country, a continent where many people seem to know God or seem to be faith-based in the individuals, either they're in the church or in their mosque. But when it comes to policy issues, whether national or continental, faith-based institutions are not really integrated. They are not part of, they are not on the table. Mm -hmm. Is that a concern for you? And this is not because we're a faith-based lady or something, mm -hmm. but is that a concern for you? If faith-based leaders were an integral part of the policy articulation, mm -hmm. would that help? Uh, I, I believe so. I believe so, Dr. Emmanuel. When I, when I look at uh, faith-based organizations, mm -hmm. Um, that's where we all started. Absolutely. Uh, we all, as young children, start from mm. a church or a madrasa somewhere. Mm. And these are institutions that continue playing a very pivotal role, especially when it comes to values. We inculcate our values by having those growing up in a faith-based institution. Mm -hmm. That is the first place when we learn about this is wrong, this is right, mm. this, is, this is how we should treat our neighbors sure. and all that. So when, again, we do not have the faith-based faith institution uh, in our daily operations, mm. then it becomes a task or a, 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 a futile task. Mm. Because one of the things you will find, uh, sometimes we want to put faith-based at a corner, mm -hmm as we do our, our work at this yeah. other corner. Sure. But it means that the checks and balances are not there. Mm. Uh, when we have the faith-based organizations, for me, I believe it's a collaborative Absolutely. effort. Whatever a church is trying to, or a mosque mm. is trying to achieve mm. is to ensure that we have a community of developed, uh, integrated, productive, people. Mm. And that's the same thing the government mm. is trying to do. Mm. That's the same thing uh, institutions are trying to do. Mm. They're trying to ensure that we have a productive society, we, we, we have a balanced society, a happy society. Sure. So for me, I believe working together mm. should be what we are striving for, Interesting. collaboration. Interesting. Now, my final but one question. Mm. Are you hopeful about the future of this continent? And if you are, mm -hmm. what makes you so hopeful? Are you optimistic about the future of this continent? 
Mali, Niger, Burkina uh, Faso, no, Mali, Niger, mm -hmm. uh, about four of these Francophone nations have said they are pulling out of air corps. Um, this year, a lot of elections are taking place on our continent. Mm. The youth are despondent. A lot of young people are complaining and all of that. Are you optimistic about the future of this continent? Oh, Dr. Emmanuel, oh yes, I'm very optimistic. Because of where you are seated? Not because, because of where no, I'm I mean, seated. But you see everything. <laughs> when it comes to youth, you know there are challenges, yes. you know their optimism, you know what government must do and all of that. Are you optimistic about the future of our continent? Oh yes, I'm very, very optimistic. Okay, so if we're Number optimistic, one. <laughs> now that's your camera. Yes. I want you to tell the women and the young people, mm -hmm. not only in Nairobi, not only in Kenya, mm -hmm. the whole continent. Yeah. Why are you optimistic? And what would you want them to do mm -hmm. to be able to get this continent, as far as Agenda 23 is concerned, mm -hmm. to be the Africa that we want? Before I even speak to the okay. youth, to sure. the youth of Africa, right. I think one of the things uh, I would I would want to say is that I'm very optimistic. Absolutely. The reason I'm very optimistic is because when you look at even the seat I'm sitting, right. it is not many women sitting such a seat. Sure. It is not many youth are privileged yeah. to sit in that seat. It used to be those with grey hair and all of that. Exactly. So I'm optimistic because I'm seeing young people being given opportunities to sit mm. in decision-making right. uh, bodies. Sure. Young people to be part of the conversation about the youth, about the women. Mm. So youth of Africa, we are the youth and the leaders of today. We are women, youth, and leaders of today. We can no longer continue being told we are the youth of tomorrow or the women of tomorrow. We are the leaders of now. There are so many opportunities out there what we need to do is grab them. We need to take the opportunities provided to us. Africa is young and a young continent. With 75% of our youth, 75% of our women being alive, being the people who are going to determine what do we want in the Africa we want. Under the agenda, the, the, agenda, the, Africa, the AU Agenda 2063, it's about the Africa we want. We cannot wait for someone else to come and dictate for us. We need to be at the forefront, making those decisions. We need to be at the forefront, giving our contribution, telling our governments, holding our governments accountable to the things that they've promised for the youth and women of this country. We want to, we want to be the youth that are taking up the opportunities. We can no longer sit and complain. We need to take the opportunities, seize them, and ensure that by when history is being written tomorrow, we will be part of the history of the youth that got us to where our forefathers wanted us to be. Our forefathers wanted uh, an Africa that is led by Africa that provides solutions for itself. They wanted an Africa that can be able to be solution-based. One thing I'm calling our African youth, our African women, we have to change our mindsets. We can no longer wait for someone to come and provide solutions. We are the youth and women who have been given these opportunities, opportunities to contribute to policies, opportunities to contribute to how we would want Africa to be driven, and again, opportunity to actually call for accountability from our leaders. One of the things we've seen when we get these opportunities as African young people, sometimes we forget and we, take, we continue with the old trajectory. We can no longer continue with that. We are now accountable as youth. When the, the history will be written, it will be written as the youth and women who contributed to the development of the Africa we want. So I'm calling upon all African youth and women to ensure when the history is being written, let us be at the positive side of history. Thank you. This chair, I teach leadership. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people get into this chair and they, take, they tend to forget that whatever is being done to them mm -hmm. is because of them. They mm -hmm. forget that it's because of the chair. Mm -hmm. They say what lasts most is the legacy you leave behind. Mm -hmm. Five years from now, ten years from now, mm -hmm. or politically, I don't know, if we're no longer here, these events, mm. the Iranians, 
the Celestines and all of those, mm. and the youth of Kenya, how would you want them to remember Margaret Kilgora? What legacy do you want to leave? <laughs> uh, he always told uh, you, you don't write your, your story, you allow others to write it. But yes. today, I yes. want to be able to... Please. Because uh, I would want them to judge them. I would want them to be the jury. Sure. When I become the jury, uh, it means I'm going to favor myself because right. we are human beings. Right. Uh, when we started this meeting, we started with the word of prayer. Absolutely. And I'm a believer. Sure. And being a, a believer, the, in the Bible, and I believe even in the Quran, it's written, to the one, much is given, much is expected. And the minute when you're a leader, you realize there is a lot expected when you sit on that chair. You're no longer the one responsible for the actual uh, activity, but you are responsible for the people doing that work. Sure. The minute a leader realizes that, that's the time you realize the burden you carry. That's the time you realize the responsibility you carry. Because I would want by the time I leave, that's it. I have empowered young people. And not just empowering by m word of mouth, but by action. I would want a youth in a very remote area to say, I've been inspired by the work that you've done. You provided an opportunity that I did not have. Because, Dr. Emmanuel, trust me, there are young people who have no person to hold their hand. Absolutely. I would want to be that mentor. I would mentor you, maybe from a far distance, by even listening to this conversation. Sure. I would inspire you, maybe, as a young person. So for me, I want to be able to inspire the youth, to be able to show them it's possible, to be able to show them that it's not just for the who is who, but it's for the young people who are hardworking, who are determined, and who go for it. By the way, one thing that young people will need to do is to seize the opportunity. No one is going to call you at a football a game if you're not at the court. If you're not at the court, when the referee is changing a player, mm -hmm. they're not going to call someone who Absolutely. is at home. They're going to call someone who is at the field. Sure. We need to be at the field. We need to be there. So that by the time someone is saying, who is this youth I want to send? You're Everybody. there to say, yes, I am ready to take this opportunity. So for me, the legacy I want to leave behind, as I said again, I would want the young people of this country, I would want the young people of Africa to write and be the jury. But if I must, I would want to mentor young people to leave a youth space better than I found it. So that when you look behind, there's one thing you've said, when leaders sit there, they think they'll never leave their position. I want by the time I'm leaving out, my children benefit mm. from the process that I've been able to create. Reason being, if you create a path, if you put in structures, those structures outlive you being on that chair. Absolutely. So for me, it's living structures that generations to come, others will come and build up to it. And we can look, when we are 70 or 100 years, we can look back and say, truly, we were part of this transformation. So that will be my legacy. Wow. This has been Margaret Kugora, the Chief Executive Officer of the National Youth Council of the Republic of Kenya. Yeah. If there's something that I, if I, if I, if I'm to summarize, I won't be able to summarize, but one thing I want you to work home with is that the youth of Africa, the youth of Kenya, be at the discussion room. But you see, you cannot get to the discussion room unprepared. And that's exactly what Margaret is telling us. That the continent Africa depends on you young people, depends on the youth. And if there's anything that you have picked up from this conversation, I believe it has been get ready because it is your time. You are no longer the leader of tomorrow, but you are the leader of today. Mm -hmm. Get ready and let us make the Africa the Africa we want. If this conversation has helped you, mm -hmm. if there's something that you have really picked up, and you really want to share, please go ahead and share with as many people as possible. Let's all help 
change the continent to be the Africa that we want. We want to hear your feedback. So please feel free, send us your feedback, send us your, you know, your thoughts and everything, how we can improve this channel for you. This is the Channel 63 Network, and our hope and our mandate is that we want to make sure that we become the Africa we want and that faith-based institutions are brought to the center table as far as policy issues are concerned. We would want to request you, please, subscribe to this channel and make noise about it and let everybody hear the conversation as it's unfolding. Africa, Africa needs you. you.